intermediate accounting, dilutive securities, and earnings per share. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. You'll see our email and our phone number listed here. And a good source for this discussion was a, an education source that I found on the internet, and the link is listed below. I want to talk about dilutive securities, and we've got to start off the discussion by talking about earnings per share. We're talking about EPS is earnings as a company divided by the number of common stock shares outstanding. And you can think of that as money in a bucket. And the money can go to pay a dividend or it can be kept in the company as retained earnings. Dilutive securities means that the dollars in earnings are spread over more common stock shares, which is the third bullet point here. So when you think of diluting, think of adding water. When we want to dilute something, we add water to it, and we spread it out, we thin it out, we spread it out over more volume. The same thing is true with dilutive securities. We're spreading those same dollars of earnings over more common stock shares. I've switched to uh, Excel here, and I want to use my same example of the Levi Jean Company. We have a balance sheet and an income statement that we've seen in prior videos. And what I have here below is the calculation of earnings per share, which is the net income, in this case $7,000, divided by the common stock shares outstanding. And I made a note here that by shares outstanding, we mean weighted average. The shares at the beginning of the year plus the end of the year divided by two to get an average. In this case, our formula is $7,000 in net income divided by $8,000 common stock share is issued and outstanding, which you can see here in the equity section. We have two choices of what we can do with our company earnings. We can pay them out as a dividend to shareholders, or we can keep those earnings as retained earnings in, to use in the business. So we have two choices. What I want to do now is switch to back to Excel and talk about the types of dilutive securities. One of them is convertible bonds, bonds that be, can be converted into common stock. We talked about this convertible bond issue in video 13. We also have stock warrants and compensation plans we're going to see in a later video. And finally, stock options that we're going to see in a minute. And you should know that with all of these, we're going to report to shareholders two types of earnings per share. One is the earnings per share as things stand now with the amount of common stock outstanding today, that would be the before picture. And the after picture is the earnings per share assuming that all these securities that are outstanding in the first three bullet points are converted into common stock, which we would call fully diluted earnings per share. It's a what if scenario. What if everything that could be converted into common stock was converted? That would obviously spread the same dollar amount of earnings over a much, much wider amount of common stock. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back to Excel here, and I've got an earnings dilution example for stock options. I've taken the equity section of the balance sheet and put it up here at the top of the video. Same $0.88 cents earnings per share. And I want to talk about stock options for just a minute. Stock options are used as an incentive to get employees to stay at a company over the long term. So here's an example. Joe Clark is the CEO of Levi's Jeans. And on 12-15-09, we grant Joe the option, his choice, to purchase 100 shares of common stock at $35 a share. And he has that right to do that until 12-13-2010, after which the right to do that expires worthless. When we grant Joe that option, the market price of the common stock is below the, the price of the option, the price at which he can exercise and buy the stock. So it wouldn't make sense if the market price is at 28 to buy at 35. We'd just pay the market price. So Joe chooses to do nothing. March 10th of 010, Joe, our CEO, decides to exercise the option. And specifically, he buys the common stock at 35, which was the agreed upon price. 
And when he decides to do this, the market price of the stock is at 40. And specifically, the market price of 40 is higher than the option price of 35. So assuming that Joe holds the stock, he has an unrealized gain. We call it an unrealized gain because there's no sale yet. There's only a buy. And his unrealized gain is the market price of the stock less the price of the option 35. He has an unrealized gain of 5. If he chooses to sell the stock at some point, he may have a realized gain. So the next thing to talk about is the accounting entry that occurs when Joe exercises his option and buys the stock. Cash is going to go up $3,500, 100 shares at 35 when Joe pays for the shares. We're going to add the $1 of par value that we've talked about in prior videos. $1 of the 35 is the par value. That goes on the common stock line of the equity statement. And the remaining $34 we call additional paid in capital. So that's the accounting entry. And the last thing we should note is, well, what happens to the financial statements now that we have, <clears throat> excuse me, more shares outstanding? You can see that our common stock went from 8,000 shares to 8,100. So 8,100 is in the common stock section. And that our additional paid in capital went up $3,400, the amount of the additional paid in capital that Joe paid in on this line above. So we have more equity outstanding, which makes sense because we issued more stock to Joe. But here's the important part of stock options. If you assume that on March 31st, 2010, this should be 2010, excuse me, that we have the same amount of earnings, $7,000. We are now taking the same dollar amount of earnings, $7,000, which was up here at the top and also here. And we are dividing that earnings dollar amount by the same number of shares outstanding. So the result is, is that our earnings per share is diluted. It decreases from $0.86 cents to $0.86 cents from $0.88. Cents. So the act of Joe exercising the options causes the company to issue more stock assuming the same dollar amount of earnings the earnings per share for the company would go down so to wrap up on stock options the purpose is to reward key employees the grant date means that's the date the clock starts running on Joe to make a decision whether or not he wants to own the stock Exercise means use options to buy the stock. That's the end of part 14. Here's our YouTube channel. We have small group live chats weekly that are inexpensive for live one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Here's our web address, our email, and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.